What is AMSEAL and why are so many highliners incorporating it into their systems? Check it out on this episode of How Not to Highline. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinks and welcome to my kitchen. This is our first video of the AMSteel edition where we are going to dive into all the AMSteel basics you need to know for highlining. The story starts with Dyneema. About 20 years ago, Dyneema was born in the Netherlands and is an ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene, or a fancy plastic. The fancy name was SK60, and Samson Rope made it into, well, a rope, and called it Amsteel. We all know how scientists love to process the crap out of things, so they processed SK60 and made it into SK75, which is 30% stronger. They thought of a clever name to help us confuse the two types by calling the new Amsteel, Amsteel Blue, which of course comes in multiple colors, just like the other Amsteel, just to confuse us. Then they found a way to eliminate creep, the irreversible stretch that rope gets over time. Samson Rope named the new SK78 Amsteel Blue Dyneema AS78. I can only assume AS means Amsteel. So now it seems every marine company out there makes a SK75 or SK78 version of a 12 strand single braid rope. So now we have more fancy brand names to help confuse us. However, just like Kleenex and tissues are used interchangeably, so is Amsteel and Dyneema. Here you are looking at blue, Amsteel blue, the SK75 kind. They take the tiny filaments of whatever SK Dyneema they're using and they twist it into strands. It's eight strands for the skinny Amsteel ropes and 12 strands for the thicker ropes. It is basically a replacement for steel cable. I mostly see it online for towing and marine applications. This fancy rope is eight times lighter than steel cable and yet stronger than steel cable of the exact same diameter. It floats on water, which is why it probably has so many marine applications. And if you pull this stuff real hard, it almost stretches 1%. It's extremely static. If it breaks, it doesn't whiplash like a steel cable, which made for a gruesome opening scene in Ghost Ship. It doesn't kink. It doesn't rust, obviously. It's extremely flexible, and you don't get any wire splinters from Amsteel. The strength of this Amsteel is amazing. This six mil, eight mil, and nine millimeter Amsteel can hold 8,600 pounds of force, 13,700 pounds of force, and even 19,600 pounds of force. Fun fact, Dean Potter used to walk on one inch Amsteel and that broke at 109,000 pounds and it cost over $10 for a single foot. Another fun fact, Samson Rope makes a six and five eighths diameter Amsteel blue rope that has a 20 inch circumference and weighs over 10 pounds a foot and holds 4.4 million pounds of force. It is so expensive, I couldn't even find a price online for it. If you highline with that, you'd be broke and probably be downgraded to walking on a small bridge. Warning, let's talk about how not to use Amsteel. It has a low melting point, keep friction off of it. It doesn't play well with other chemicals, keep it clean. And it doesn't like knots because of its slippery surface and the tight bends that a knot has reduces the strength by over 50% if it holds it all. Amsteel requires splicing, which keeps 90 to 95% of its strength. Splicing is where you thread the rope through itself, since it's hollow, acting like a Chinese finger trap. You can splice two different ways. Push it through with the official splicing tool called the Selma Fid, a hollow needle, or pull it through with a wire with a bend in it. Let's go over some splicing basics. You start by pushing the 12 strands of the Amsteel together. So you can slip your Selma Fid inside the center. It's very important to be inside the center. You have to have six strands on this side and six strands on this side. Option one is to use the Selma Fid to pull the Amsteel through itself. There's a little hook on it right here on the inside, which keeps the Amsteel placed where it's supposed to, and you can pull it through. And it's got six strands on both sides, creating an eye. Another option you have is to open up your eye a little bit bigger. Get through six strands, six strands, and you just work it 
so your eye is pretty large. And then you just take a angled cut taped piece of am steel and you can just push it through. And that is by far the simplest way. Another option is to use your wire with a bend in it. Push your strands through. You go through the center and you stick your am steel in this thing and it pinches it and pulls it through. And you just massage it until the hole is big enough so that slips through, creating your eye. To bury the tail of Amsteel inside of itself with the Selma Fid, you push it together and slip the Selma Fid down the center of the Amsteel. Then that little hook right there, you work the Amsteel inside of the fid and then it holds it in place and you just twist it making sure that the fid goes down the center of the rope. I grab this side and I just start massaging it. Push it down further, grab and massage, push it down further. And the gentler you are with this, the easier it'll go. And now we have our eye and I'm gonna slip that out and I'm gonna pull the tail out. That slips right off. Now I have this eye here. We'll talk about tapering the end off in a minute, but you start here and you want your eye about that big. And you start massaging until you get all of that ironed out. And that's how you bury with the Selma Fit. Another way to bury the amp seal inside of itself with a wire is to go up the am steel and pull it through. Now you have to know that you have to, if you want it this long, that you have to go further back to about here in order to account for the shrinkage that happens because this gets fatter. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna slip my wire up the am steel and grab the tail. Once you get the end seal pulled through, take the wire off, iron out the bend, and put the eye wherever you want, and massage the am steel down just like you did before until the tail disappears. If your tail is sticking out, you need to redo it. Remember, these are just the basics for splicing. There are a lot more details into building whoopies and soft shackles and continuous loops and all sorts of things that you can do with this, but this is just the mechanics of getting the rope through itself. Okay, let's talk about tapering the end. You see how this goes from fat to thin very suddenly? It's common practice to taper the last couple inches of your berry. One method is just to cut it at a sharp angle. Be careful not to cut yourself or the am steel. Am steel will dull your knife quickly. Be aware. And that's tapered enough and then you can pull it through. The more correct way to taper your am steel is to go up the rope a couple inches and to unweave each strand. And then you progressively cut three at a time. So there's three there. I'm gonna cut all the way up away from myself. The next three I'm gonna go a little bit further up towards the end. And then the last three, I will cut near the very end. And now I have a true taper. I will suck that through there. And that right there goes from fat to thin progressively. Be sure to tape the end of your am steel. Do not burn it to melt it like the end of a nylon rope. It does not burn well. It just melts all odd 
and it doesn't accomplish anything. So be sure to tape any ends you don't want unraveling when you're not using it. Another common amp seal practice is to use a thimble inside of an eye. By doing that, it gives a wide bend radius, which will keep the majority of the amp steel strength. Okay guys, that was amp steel 101. I'm sure you can see why Highlanders like using it. It's strong, it's light, and you can make it into a variety of goodies. But it does require technical knowledge to use it, and it hasn't been thoroughly tested in the highlining applications, therefore, you shouldn't highlight. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinks, and this was another episode of the How Not to Highline series. It's a guide for slackliners interested in transitioning into highlining. We are not here to spoon feed the right rigging techniques. We are here to empower slackers to critically analyze any system that they're going to use. Risk awareness can keep people alive. Please don't rig your first highline without an expert. We have too many wonderful and generous people in our highlining community to go rig your first highline after watching YouTube tutorials. Let's keep this sport safe. And remember, no system is perfect, therefore you shouldn't highline. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.